Hi everyone, we are, as we are recording this video right now, it is December 6, 2022. It's a Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Uh, I don't know when I will get a chance to finish editing the video and uploading it, but it is December 6th right now as I'm speaking. And I just finished doing a whole series of interviews. I think the, t uh, the total number came up to 12. A series of 12 interviews that I did with um, a number of great guests. I, I feel very fortunate. All of the conversations I had were very pleasant, very informative, delightful. Okay, so I want to talk about a book in this video. Before getting to that book, I want to let you know that my reading group is, um, is again at a transition point. We finished going through uh, the basic, basic writings of Immanuel Kant over a period of six months. We read a big portion of that, that book. Edited, selected and edited by Alan Wood. I sat down and wrote a list of books and I asked my Patreon supporters, the members of my reading group, to also make suggestions. We voted and we ended up with um, a small list of books that we are going to go through. On December 17th, we are going to get together and talk about Milan Kundera's short novel, novella, Slowness. Slowness, excuse me. <clears throat> and early January, uh, January 14th, mid-January, we are going to talk about another novella by Milan Kundera, Identity. So if you're interested in joining my reading group, this is the first one we will get together to discuss. So uh, if you're interested, uh, the plan is to read it beforehand and then uh, gather to discuss uh, this book first and a little bit later, Identity. These two books are both quite short. Uh, you can read them quickly, but they're very different. Uh, slowness is, as I remember it, is more about culture, history, uh, cultural identity, the way we remember, the way we live, the pace of life. Uh, identity is more about relationships and, again, identity, personhood in the context of relationships. And they are both, of course, they have the Kundera style, which is wonderful. Um, after that, in um, the following two sessions, we are going to read a work by Jacques Derrida, The Gift of Death. And after that, uh, we are going to read three essays by Suzanne Sontag on inter uh, against, excuse me, <laughs> against interpretation, not on interpretation, against interpretation, on style, and artist as exemplary sufferer. So each week is going to be devoted to one of those. So again, I invite you to consider joining. Life is Elsewhere. This is the book that I, I want to devote the rest of this video to. Life is Elsewhere, also by Milan Kundera. This wonderful, sweet, painful, tragic book, I mean, not pain, painful, not in a bad way, uh, in a, a, a lot of great experiences of works of art give us a kind of pain that is combined with that artistic vision, the vision of the artist that is being shared with us, is being shown, and it's a pain of understanding. Okay, so this book, this novel, this story is about the life of a young poet. Yaromil is the name of the young, young poet. So we find him when he's a little baby. He grows up. He becomes a young man. He learns to express himself, his thoughts, his emotion, emotions uh, in poetry. And he enters into relationships. He falls in love. He finds himself, he kind of finds his personal, a kind of personal philosophy. And, and he's still young when we leave him at the, end of the, at the end of the story. The novel is also about the poet's mother, Yaromil's mother and the relationship between the mother and the son and how formative that relationship is not only for the son but also for the mother so these two sides of this relationship they form each other they they derive meaning from each other the presence of each other and the relationship the, the mother-son relationship is quite complex in many ways they stand opposed to each other in many ways the 
the sun is trying constantly to run away from the influence of the of the mother um, so in many ways they are up they are in opposition in many ways they they um, they are in conflict but in many ways they are similar and in many ways they are uh, dependent on each other sometimes without knowing there's a third person in that in that little family dynamic and that is the father and the way I read this and the way I think about this story is that the presence of the father has immense influence in not only individually on the son and the mother slash wife, but also on the relationship between the mother and the son. The father's presence is extremely indifferent. The father doesn't care that much. He's not interested. He's not interested in his family life. He's distant. He's that, he doesn't get involved. And he doesn't even have that desire. He, he didn't have a desire to be a father to begin with. And that desire dies out um, throughout the family life, throughout the story, as the family develops. So that's an important note. And I, I see the, both the character of the mother and the character of the son, Yaromil, the poet. Both of them, I see them both as reacting to that indifference, uh, to that indifference presence of the father and trying to cope with that indifference, with that uh, indifferent background, uh, indifferent father figure, because the father in many ways is setting the tone of their existence, the background of their existence. So they become, a kind of persistence develops in them, a kind of passion to prove that indifference wrong, to counteract, to counterbalance that indifference. A kind of passion develops in them to go against that indifference in both of them. And it takes a it takes the form of seeking images that are convincing. So, so to put it simply, Yaromil is not a kind of person who just wants to live, who just wants to enjoy living. He wants to be confident enough to go on living. He wants confidence. The mother also, the mother similarly, needs to have the confidence to go on living, needs to have that. So that indicates a kind of lack, indicates a kind of like battling against forces of indifference. We might say and so um, as a consequence so it, it, what they seek what they end up seeking is they seek convincing images they seek convincing in the case of Yaromil he wants to convince himself and others through the creation of convincing poems poetic images poetic fantasies and it's really interesting that the complementary characters that these two main characters of our story they they find at least temporarily they find they enter into relationships with these characters that complement them they are one of them is a painter again in the, in the business of image making the other one is a movie maker so Yaramil enters into a relationship for a time with a movie maker image maker you know it's it kind of in to me I Again, I see that as a revelation of what they are seeking, the kind of thing that they are seduced by, the kind of thing that can seduce them, their weakness, what they are, what it is that is uh, that they are driven by, which is like comp they want to be, they want to be convinced, they want to find, create, and be convinced by solid images. Both the mother and the and, and Yaromil. There is a scene towards the end of the. The novel where Yaramil is is quite sick, and the mother is sitting next to him, and on the surface the mother is taking care of him, but the sick son starts to say some kind, sweet things to the mother, like, "Oh, my mother, you 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 still you look young, you're still beautiful, you are the best. I I've never loved anybody else more than I have loved you." So. The mother, hearing that, reacts with such immense satisfaction. And Kundera tells us that this is the thing that she really wants. That's the, that's the thing she wants. Even though she's taking care of him, she's still using him to get that image material out of him. <clears throat> that material for her own conviction so that she can go on living. One more thing I'll say about this novel, one other great theme is the theme of jealousy, what jealousy is, a, 
a big chunk of this novel is an exploration of um, what jealousy is. And essentially, jealousy is the inability to accept that the person who is important to us has a different world, ha belongs to a different world. And in that world, there are other people, other friends, family mem members, concerns, some projects, I don't know, financial concerns, responsibilities, duties that I, the, the first person, doesn't know about. The inability to accept that, that there's another world that the other person knows about, the other person belongs to, and I don't belong to that world, and I don't even know about that world, that is the essence of jealousy, or this type of jealousy at least. And the person who really seeks images and seeks an audience for the images that they are creating, that person really cannot cope with that jealous feeling because they want the audience to be absorbed in their creation, in their world. Stay in my world. Don't go to another. Don't pay attention to your world. Your world is not as... Tell me that that world is not as important as this thing that I'm showing you. You know, That's the, the jealousy that we also see in, uh, in the life of this young poet. Now, what about the title, Life is Elsewhere? What does that mean? It means uh, not just one thing. It means several things. One of the possible meanings is that when we are engaging in the construction of these images, these, these artificial images that we want to be convinced by, we want to, be, uh, we want to have our meaning of life solidly established. As we are in the process of constructing these images, Life is happening in, a, in some other way, in some other place. We are making this place, we are making this world, this image, this world of images, this fantasy, and we might be really immersed in it. We might really be attached to it, but life is happening elsewhere. So this is just one way of reading it. And life in, uh, in some of the scenes in the novel, life kind of erupts in. The characters get shocked, and one way life gets gets in as an eruption as an interruption is when characters are going through something in their mind they are with their significant other their their date their girlfriend boyfriend they are with that other person something is going through their mind they have some plans some they make some assertions and suddenly they feel like they they are sexually aroused so that's that's something that surprises them and Kundera takes note of that of that surprise. I was like, he was, he, it didn't make sense to him why or her, why this happened, why this arousal happened, why now, why in this place, it doesn't make sense. And that, of course, it's um, not of course, but it's uh, kind of a, a mismatch, a misalignment between what we are going through, what, what we are constructing in terms of images, our plans, our fantasies, and life itself, the reality. All right, I think that's good. Uh, if you have read this novel, let me know what you think. If you have read other works by the great, amazing Milan Kundera, let me know. I'm interested uh, to hear from you. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I will speak with you in the next video.